Okay, for tonight's project, I just got something working that I've been working on for a really long time. I'm tuned to 14.69 MHz, and I'm receiving PSK31 signals. Now, this is not a commercial radio I'm using, but actually, this is my homebrew device that I've been working on for a little while. It's now acting as a software-defined radio. I have a tank circuit here with an inductor and a capacitor. I can change the capacitor to adjust tuning to maximally get the signal. I have a DDS board that's an AD9850 AD based board uh, from eBay. It's only a few dollars. And it's using an SA612 mixer and an LM386 amplifier. The digital synthesizer board is controlled by an AT Mega 8. And this is the neat thing it's interacting with the computer through a serial connection. Uh, these pins are what goes to one of those RS232 adapter cables and it gives me USB so I can control frequency by USB and the other thing is that the output of the radio goes into this little two dollar sound card and then it goes from this USB hub into the computer down there and uh, so we can do all the obvious stuff you know decoding digital signals like that but we can also use this commercially available software and this is free software ham radio deluxe uh, to connect to what looks like an ICOM 781 uh, I designed the serial interface to work over this virtual COM port. It's actually a real COM port, that USB thing. And my device that I wrote the uh, code for looks exactly to the computer like an ICOM 781 radio. And that's this radio. So that's great. It has a lot of features to it, etc. But it thinks it's controlling that radio when, in fact, I can drag around here. It's controlling uh, my little board. You can hear some Morse code in there. You can see it a little bit on the spectrum. Uh, I have some audio filtering software up here that can adjust my bandpass filter in real time. So if I want to select a single Morse code Weak Morse code, I can. Uh, let's. Here's some, uh, I think it's JT65. And we've got some, well, it looks like PSK way up there. Um, It's pretty late at night for a robust 14 megahertz. And also, the antenna I'm using is a, a wire going into my ceiling, and then it's a dipole, um, a very crude dipole whose lengths aren't really measured. Let's drop down to 30 meters, which is restricted to Morse code. Oh, another thing is uh, when I change bands, I turn the volume up a little bit, and I twist this knob until I hear the volume go up. There we go. So now I know I'm, I have maximum resonance. There are some signals. Mm, not too much on 30 meters right now. Let's try 40 meters. Same thing as before. There's our PSK31. Adjust this some more. There we go. Some packet, I guess. Now 
it's not English. Okay, I'm going to uh, turn this software off here, so now it's not filtering the audio, and I can enable the listen to this device option with Windows, so you can hear what it sounds like. So unlike the software that normally only lets you hear 3 or 4K of audio, this will let you hear about 40K. Okay, let's be bold here and drop it down to 3 megahertz. I thought we'd expect to see Morse code. Oh, well, that worked right out of the box. But let's tune it for resonance. I might not have enough capacitance here. Yeah, I'm going to say I don't have enough capacitance with this to get optimal resonance. Yeah. Should be good. Might be a little too much. There we go. Ha! Ah, we're receiving uh, PSK31 and some Morse code at the same time. Let's scan around some more. Got some squealing, so I'll turn on the filters. Now we can hear that. I'll go up here.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take a closer look here. So this is being powered by about 7 volts from the power supply. Let's take a closer look here. Um, this is one of those FTDI cables I talked about. I'll take that out. And this is the connection to the audio. This is that power going in. And this is kind of clever. But I made this uh, interface board to stick right there, and beneath it we have the mixer, um, SA612, LM786, and it's pretty straightforward. We've got some magnet wire on the back. So hopefully I can improve the circuit a little bit. Um, the antenna is balanced coming in. It's going around a toroid that has a, another winding which is a tank circuit, just the inductor and the capacitor here. And then the third winding goes to the input of the SA612.